my stepfather at the time. And we always spent our summers going from North Carolina up to Lake Michigan uh, to a place called Lake Charlevoix. And uh, that was our second year going. And he decided that he needed to tell this sort of introverted kid that he needed to be extroverted, I guess. Uh, but we started with that scene. Uh, and then that was coupled with, um, we both grew up on the East Coast, and we both sort of spent our summers going to the same destination for, you know, Nat and Nantucket for me, uh, Lake Charlevoix. So that community of people that see each other just once a year, you know, and, and that life has changed and they show up and reconvene was an interesting world for us. And then finally we spent a lot of summers at water parks. Um, and so... You're, oh. you're now five, though. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. This is so sweet. That was so unsolicited. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. A five. Yeah. We'll see how... I was hoping for higher, but you know what? Well, Every point counts. See, see how the Q&A goes? Yeah. You know, bud? Okay, bud? Oh, okay, bud. Thanks, bud. The movie gets a ten, though, right, folks? Woo! <laughs> So, Bernie, uh, without, without getting into too much inside baseball talk about Hollywood, The Way Way Back had a very interesting journey going from about to be, it's, a, it's about to be made, and then it didn't, and then that led to another film, and then that, that film led to The Way Way Back getting made with you guys directing. So, so talk about good things coming to those who wait. Let's, let's hear that story. Yeah, we... Uh... Yeah, we wrote this about eight years ago and came out of the gates very quickly and, and uh, it was very exciting. It was going to happen um, really uh, within months and the film got greenlit and we were told that this never happens, that you know stories like this don't exist. And then you realize that they were right, that they don't happen that way at all. And stories don't exist. And eight years later. <laughs> yes. And then eight years later, yes. Uh, so we, we um, the movie sort of fell apart, and then we went to a different studio and had different directors come aboard, and, and those ultimately fell apart. And um, in the meantime, the script did open a lot of doors for us, and, and we got in uh, to meet with Alexander Payne and Jim Burke and uh, Jim Taylor about writing The Descendants, and um, got that job. And, and certainly after that, we had some momentum, and we also, the script had gone through turnaround, and, and so about three years ago, we decided to direct it ourselves, and using the sort of momentum from the Descendants, um, we're able to, you know, attract cast and financing, and, and we're able to do it and shoot it, you know, to last year, I guess. So so that led to your, your going after your cast, and I understand that the first person to sign on is sitting right here with us tonight. That's right. Thank you. That was before the Descendants had come out, so I was on board before they were hot. So, so you read, and what did you think when you read this, and, and like how fast did you jump on? Uh, immediately. When I read, I mean, the script is amazing, but when I read uh, Betty's first scene, as a, I don't know if it's coming from my theater background or whatever, but I love when I, this part just got me so excited because of Betty's just, just diving into that scene and taking over like a whirlwind, you know, just, just and throwing up out of the mouth and everything else comes out and I just thought that is going to be so much fun to play. I couldn't wait to do it. And, um, and Jim and Nat told me this great story about how they got the idea for Betty because they had got, one of them had gotten some Christmas card from, um, from a family, you know how they send Xerox letters and with everything that's going on in the family, and it's like, oh my God, really? I, mean, I don't mean to offend anybody here if you've done that. It can't be wonderful. Oh, wonderful thing. But the wonderful thing. The wonderful thing. But what? But this one particular letter was like, um, it, it was it was uh, stunningly negative, super like negative. super yeah. negative, like. You know, Susie failed her baton class. Yeah. And, um, and I, I hope that was what the letter said. <laughs> oh, she failed the baton class. <laughs> I don't even, I don't even oh, I'm not the baton class. class. <laughs> what a year. Happy <laughs> but it, holidays. But it was. It was extremely negative. Uh, like they just said, you know what, this is cathartic. Here's our year. I'm sorry. Hope you have a good one. Happy holidays. Like a, and we just love that unfiltered woman who was just saying, here's, what, here's my life, here's everybody else's life, now let's move on and enjoy the summer, you know. And we just loved that, and that was, you know, we knew that Allison would be the perfect person for that.
Why and why was that? <laughs> well, okay, let's not go into that. No, I'm... <laughs> Betty is definitely a tall glass of water. Yeah. That's... Or or something else. But uh, you, with starting with you, it's, it's what an ensemble. I mean, you have. Okay, I'm just going to say two words. Sam Rockwell. Take it away. <laughs> yes, I mean, uh, yeah, he was fine. No, he was a, No, Sam, um, you know, you can't say enough wonderful things. Like the water park kid? Yeah, yeah. Okay. The, 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 they get stuck in the tube. You get stuck in the tube. <laughs> Very funny. I always have to remind him. But, um, yeah, you can't say enough about Sam. I mean, we, um, we, you know, this Owen in our minds was sort of for us, like thinking about what Bill Murray felt like us to me in Meatballs, you know, and and uh, here you have Sam, who who probably has mostly done sort of uh, off kilter characters. Can villains. I just interject for a yeah. Because I actually, before I even arrived in Marshfield, I thought Sam was playing Trent, and and uh, Steve Carell was was playing his part. I, yeah. I, no, I just assumed, and then I got there, and I was like. They're, they're flipped Fantastic. a little bit, just in what they normally play, you know. But uh, but for Owen, you know, we I mean for Owen Sam, we sort of uh, had a very un Hollywood, I guess, sort of meeting with him in the sense that we had thought of Sam pretty early on, and and he had read the script and was interested in talking to us. So we sort of pulled we we were on our way to some other meetings. We had to talk to him. He was in uh, in New York, and we pulled over the side of the road. And we sort of prepped up for ourselves, you know, pumped ourselves up like we got to be smart. <laughs> Don't gotta, sound stupid. Don't Jim. sound stupid, Nat. No, I, yeah. that's no, the thing I say to you. No, no. I have glasses and ball. I think it's natural. I'm naturally smarter. It's true. <laughs> it's just a given. No, it's true. I'm very dumb. That's why I wear these. Uh, no, but we were, we just said we we have to you know we were we were for some directors you know we talk about yeah. the character get prepared for this and he answers his phone we're talking to him and he says yeah yeah this is uh. Yeah, uh, this is like uh, Bill Murray from Meatballs, yeah? Yeah, yeah, let's do this. Yeah, we're gonna read this thing at a table? Uh, yeah, yeah, let's do this. It was the weirdest thing, and we like hung up because we didn't want, to do, didn't want anything to happen, or us to say anything to jinx it. Wait a minute, you sound dumb. <laughs> Hold on. Hold, wait. I'm sorry, so hi! But, you know, it, it, the minute he said it, we knew we made the right choice just because we connected with it and you know, brilliant. Well, see, this is interesting because you're right, the, the two of them, Steve and, and Sam, they, they do sort of flip with the normal characters they play. So what did you think when you first saw Steve play this asshole? <laughs> Are you looking at me? <laughs> I, I thought how, how, how genius casting because of Steve's inherent likability. He's just, you just can't help but love Steve Carell and everything he does, and how wonderful to have him play opposite of type and, and uh, give the character some, some depth and see this is just a man who can't, you know, can't get out of his own way. He can't help himself with the choices he makes and he knows he just, he's stuck in, in his patterns. I thought it was a genius choice. So I understand also that you know, Steve's casting uh, came at a time like you've really determined where you were going to make this movie. Yeah, yeah. we did. We shot. Uh, well, we we had you know most uh, of the cast in place, and Steve was really the final piece. And um, you know, we had always wanted to shoot on the East Coast somewhere. You know, uh, maybe from Massachusetts and Jim, North Carolina. Most of our memories, you know, were shared and along that coast, and there was a specific look and feel to it that we wanted to capture. And um, we wrote Steve a, a long letter, you know, praying and pleading with him to be in the movie, and he wrote us a very nice letter back saying that while he loved the script and, and would, you know, be so um, grateful to be a part of it, he didn't want to become a trend to his own family because that was a time where they vacationed in Marshfield and that was a time that he had sort of blocked out to spend with his kids. And so then we wrote him another letter saying, well, what if we shot in your backyard? Would that make a difference? And, uh, and it did. And then we literally shot in his backyard. And um, so that was sort of why we ended up being in, in Marshfield in, in the South Shore of Boston. Wow. Well, another, talk about a breakthrough performance. And this is an actor, if, if, if he didn't work, the, even with the rest of the ensemble cast, the movie wouldn't have worked, but <laughs> Liam James is fantastic in this movie. <laughs> so, how did you find this movie? 
He played Owen, or he played yeah, one of the water kids. Right, 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 right. You know, he funny, funny, funny kid. You got it? Yeah, there's a lot to, you're juggling a lot when you're directing, so it's hard to remember who's who. But, um, uh, no, Liam was, he, he was on the, he's on the show AMC's The Killing, and, and was in 2012, but we, he was, uh, we weren't familiar with uh, uh, The Killing, so he was very fresh uh, to us, and, and he came from Vancouver, uh, flew down to audition in Los Angeles, and, and I, you know, it's just one of those things, we didn't do like a really wide net, you know, we didn't have the time to like scour the country for this undiscovered talent, and so we had uh, a number of sessions, but he came in, I don't know which where, but something about him when he walked in physically, you know, made us sit up because he sort of has these slumped over shoulders, you know, and, uh, and he, and he says, he pronounced himself as old soul, you know, he says, it's like me, you know, and like, here was this kid who is the age, you, you couldn't replicate it, and, and then once, you know, he auditioned, and then Tony came back and read with him, and it was pretty much obvious, even to Tony and all of us, we were like, yeah, that's him, you know, because your heart broke for him, but yet there was this, you knew this, who, the kid he would be, you know, because even when we were shooting, he and Sam bonded in real life as well, because Sam's very, just naturally, uh, just, you feel like you're his best friend right away, and so he really had the He's same... He's not your best friend. No, no. I was the one person He's Sam made your best friend. <laughs> really weird. Yeah. Um, so sorry to break that to you. Yeah, what? Sorry, yeah. just to rip you No, 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 yeah. it's okay. Uh, but anyway, it was watching what was happening, we were shooting happening in real life, you know, what, you know, Liam was fantastic. There was an effortless approach to him, very natural. You know, when you see a, an independent film, especially one that costs under five million dollars, like this did, which is amazing, right? I mean, you, you see the production value on the screen. I mean, nothing, no offense to a movie like Little Miss Sunshine, but it looked a little independent. But this looks really polished. It looks like it cost ten, easily 10 times more than it did. So how did you maintain such a high standard and great production values for a film that really was like pocket change in Hollywood standards? Yeah, it was really the... Um, you know, attributed to the crew that we were able to somehow miraculously uh, get. Uh, we had, you know, legendary people work on this film, you know, in terms of our below the line. It was John Bailey, who was our DP, who has done a laundry list of incredible movies, you know, from Big Chill to Ordinary People to Groundhog Day. I mean, the list goes on. And um, so, obviously, there was so much... Uh, you know, trust in him, and he's been married to an editor for, you know, a very long time, and so you you always felt like, okay, we're, we're, I don't think we're going to leave anything, you know, or get back and feel like, oh, we didn't shoot that one scene we talked about. Um, and we had Ann Roth, who, you know, Oscar winner and a legendary costume designer, Mark Ricker, who had production designed The Help, you know, just before this. I mean, we had an, a plethora of... Um, incredible talent that really made this possible. So. Well, I'd like to open up the questions to the audience, but I have one question before I do so. So if you have any questions, please raise your hand. Uh, Alex, okay, so Matt and Jay made their directorial debut with this film. So just pretend that they are not sitting here right now, and be honest, how were they, <laughs> how were they as first-time directors? Well, if it really is just you and me sitting here, <laughs> it was kind of a little difficult because one would say one well, was like good cop, bad cop, and, and it was like confusing as an actress to have you know Jim come up and say you're brilliant, and then Nat come up and go, you were the I made the biggest mistake casting you, and you suck. And it was terrible. Well, you did a lot of it. <laughs> so, <laughs> look, sorry, but I gotta keep you on you're your toes. Here. Yeah, that's right. No, they were they were amazing, and I've I've been huge fans of theirs before this this came along because they were they they worked the Groundlings. The, um, I don't know if any of you've been to Groundlings here in LA, but they're they're extraordinary, uh, and, yeah, improvisational actors and just brilliant. Um, I couldn't have been more excited to to work with them, and I find that the directions they gave were so just they know how to talk to actors and they they know each other so well. They they. You know, after a take, one would go, okay, you go to the DP, you go to the actor, go. You know, like, they knew exactly what they were going to say, what they wanted, their vision is clear. One of my favorite directions I've ever been given by, by two directors was with my relationship with Peter Alexander, the boy, oh, sorry, River Alexander, who plays my son. 
um, I was like having trouble relating to him, saying some of the things I do to my son. I'm like, really, I, I have to say that to him? And, and they said, just pretend he's your, you're, you're an old married couple. You've been together for, you know, 